Okay, so today we're gonna to be going through skip counting. Now, skip counting today is mostly just gonna be a timed exercise. So the idea is that in Algebra 1, throughout the series of videos that we're gonna be doing here, we need to be able to know our times tables up to 15. Now, albeit we can pull out something like this and we can figure out what, let's say, 11 times 13 is, we wanna be able to know what these are offhand up to about 15. If it's something 16 and beyond, the general expectation is that you will be able to use a calculator. And we know that yes, you are able to do this sheet using a calculator, but you wanna be able to try and train your mind to be able to do these by hand. So take today and just kind of walk through and go ahead and fill out this multiplication chart and see how quickly you can get it. So before you start, set a timer and walk all the way through. Um, the expectation is, is this should take you about six minutes-ish to get all the way through the thing. Now, your hand might cramp up, and you can add yourself a little bit of time on there. If not used to writing this much, we know that that can take a little bit and add in. But this realistically should take you about six minutes to get through. Um, if this does take you longer than about 10 minutes at the Algebra 1 level, what we need to do is just go through and practice using these multiplications by hand more often. It's not gonna come overnight, but you do want to have these memorized to the best of your ability. Um, if you're unfamiliar with this setup and you've never seen this before, um, let me walk you through a few of them so that you get the idea. You have a row and you have a column. We're gonna take the row and multiply by the column number. So one times one will give us one. One times two will give us two. One times three will give us three. One times four will give us four. If I were to move down a row, and actually let's zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. And as I move down, I would say two times one will give us two. Two times two will give us four. Two times three will give us six. Two times four will give us eight. If I did the threes, three by one, three by two, three by three, three by four. If I did fours, four by one, four by two, four by three, four by four, and then no matter what part of the table, if I were to jump to here, it's five by five. If I go down, this is uh, six by five. If I move over here, this is seven by four. This is, as we move down here, this is eight by three. And you're just filling in what the product is of those two numbers multiplied together. And again, remember, this is something that we should know because it's going to be incredibly helpful to be able to see some of the patterns when we work through problems in the class. We know that this is a skill that you can use a calculator for. We're not testing you later on, can you use a calculator? We expect you to be able to see patterns in the numbers so that when we explain how these higher level problems work, we're not needing to go back, well, what do you mean that the square root is this thing? Or how do I multiply this by that? Because now you're caught up in the arithmetic and you can't appreciate the true beauty of what algebra is. And most of the examples throughout all of these lessons catered to Algebra 1 are going to be in this realm of numbers. If it's beyond this realm of numbers, we will have a calculator icon that says, hey, pull out this thing right here. So try this, treat yourself. This should take about, like I said, six minutes to get from end to end. If not, just brush up on your multiplication tables. If you don't get anything from that and you're like, I don't have time to do that, it will make your life a little more difficult, but the big thing that you absolutely critically need to know throughout this course are your perfect squares and your perfect square roots. What is a perfect square? Well, a perfect square is what happens when I multiply one times itself twice. So I'm saying one times one. In that case, I would get one. What happens when I multiply two by itself twice? So what is two times two? Three squared would be three times itself twice, so three times three is nine. Four squared is four times four. Five squared, six squared. We need to be able to fill this out all the way to 15, pretty much by memory. These should be sight numbers that we will be able to recognize on the spot. Same thing with our square roots. We need to be able to recognize the square roots, which are, spoiler alert, the reverse of these. So what number multiplied by itself gives me one? Well, one times one gives me one. What number multiplied by itself gives me four? Two times two gives me four. Three times three gives me nine. 
So that would mean the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 36 is 6. Do you notice how these correlate between themselves? So again, these are things that I want you to take a moment and work through the perfect squares. And I want you to work through the square roots and know that these are, again, site terms. We should be able to, if you see the number 225, know that that's a perfect square root. Know that we're probably dealing with something where we want to square root the term. We can do this with a calculator. We're not suggesting that you do this via a calculator. We want you to get used to seeing how the numbers work together. And so, again, try this page out. Time yourself. This should take about six minutes. There you go.